So you may have been paying attention to what Elon Musk has been posting on Twitter, and it's quite fun, actually, because it shows that in many ways Elon Musk is kind of our man. Now, what do I mean when I say our man? I mean someone who likes to have a bit of fun on the internet and generally agrees with the sort of classically liberal principles that most <laughs> normal people hold. You didn't have to say the rest of that. The only people having fun on the internet... That's true. That, <laughs> yeah. is, that is completely true. I didn't have to say Isn't that, that the weird dilemma, though? Like, what a way to view the world, and it's totally true, which is, do you like to have fun on the internet, and then you're actually <laughs> a normal person? You're not one of these weird leftist <laughs> freaks. That is that is a way, good way of putting it. Yeah. But, um, but I think this comes from Elon just being basically of Generation X, because he has a very Generation X mindset. If you want to know more, you can go watch my hangout about Generation X versus Generation Z. Because in many ways, Generation X and Generation Z are, in fact, very similar because they are the products and the sort of the, the generation after very powerful and strident generations like the boomers and the millennials and so i think that generation x and generation z are a natural response to this frankly overbearing moralism of these two groups uh, they're different obviously because you know technology has been different but in many ways they are also the same and i think it's an interesting thing to think about because it frames what elon musk is doing in a particular way for example, uh, Elon is obviously a relatively competent businessman because he uh, put out these slides. And if you can just get these slides up just so you can see the uh, numbers. I mean, this is, you know, new user signups at an all-time high. That's great. You know, I, I can't verify the data, of course, but I don't see any particular reason to doubt him. Because, of course, Twitter seems to be booming at the moment. And this is for advertisers. Sure. Point but, like, obviously, you know, the advertising is going to be a major point for this. But there's no particular reason to doubt that this is true data either. Sure, but I mean, you were talking about him as a businessman, and the reason he does this tweet here yeah. is as a businessman. Hey, well, give us money. The hate speech impressions being lower than before is the important thing. You know, that's that's particularly for yeah. Well, that's not for us. Yeah, not the number of customers and the money you could no, make. No, 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 no. Is there a rude word on the internet? Yeah, because Sorry, I just hate the modern world. And he, Elon, actually did tweet out ESG is the devil, and it's that that you know you've got to be like, oh no, the hate speech is down, the numbers are up, everything's brilliant. I'm the best businessman in the world. Blah blah blah. Right. But the but the point is, um, <laughs> <laughs> all my staff use electric cars. <laughs> my electric cars. That's, in fact, he's he's the Henry Ford of our era, yeah. actually. Um, <laughs> and so, but it does look like things are going well from a business perspective at Twitter. He's cut unbelievable amounts of fat. He's cleared out the leftists. It's just being run by autistic tech bros now, and the numbers are just skyrocketing. Great, all good in Twitter land, you would think. And uh, Elon just posts like memes like this. I mean, a Pepe meme. I don't care about this particular psyop. To one hundred and twenty million followers. Good times. I didn't have it on my 2022 bingo card, man. Everyone has a bingo card. I know. But this wasn't but on you, it. Do you remember when, what was it, um, Nicki Minaj or something? Yeah. Do it a Pepe meme of like she dropped her ice cream and she was sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there was this big hullabaloo at the time about how, <laughs> Nicki, no! <laughs> it's the far right! <laughs> and, and I don't know if she cut it. It's a frog, it. dude. Look at yeah, it. Yeah, but it, it like... It's cute. But since that, that incident, I felt like the Pepe was verboten and um, Elon just comes back in and is like, nope. Don't care. Nope, I'm a gamer, says Elon Musk. Yeah. Uh, and so he also posted this picture, which got a lot of attention, uh, for what I think is slightly the wrong reasons. Now, the, the, big I am the, spy. <laughs> the big revolver is, I understand, from a game called Deus Ex. I never played Deus Ex. Oh, actually. well, I thought it was the ambassador. I don't mind. No, but I heard many good things about it, so, you know, probably good. Uh, the, the Coke cans got a lot of attention, which Connor pointed out may have been uh, a slight sort of subtle nod towards Trump. Because you remember Trump reputedly drank 12 cans of Diet Coke a day and uh, also doesn't think that he's never seen a thin person drinking Diet Coke. Um, but I think the more interesting bit is the fact that he has a, a colonial era pistol there with a picture of Washington crossing the Delaware because that speaks to a particular kind of ideological commitment. It shows that Elon Musk likes the founding of America, which is very interesting. Uh, otherwise, just generally quite interesting and the fact that, uh, again, he's signalling to a particular constituency with this, right? People like you, actually. That's who he's kind of signalling to. Uh, yeah. Which is good. Freedom. I like fun. Yeah. <laughs> Freedom, fun, video games. Yeah. Isn't it literally the, the target demographic of every advertiser on the planet as well? Yep. Like the, the 18 to 24 male 
white yeah. audience just like, yeah, there you are. Yeah. There's, there's people with disposable cash and who want to spend it on frivolities like this. Uh, but that's fine. <laughs> so you do. You know? but, the, but the point is, this is the kind of person who's in charge. It's very indicative of the kind of character. And so Apple were like, um, not on our watch. Apparently, Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate free speech in America? What's going on here, Tim Cook? What do you think's going on? I think Apple hate free speech. Yes. I think it's blatantly obvious. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> this isn't new. <laughs> yeah, this, this isn't new. Uh, Tim Cook is, of course, irredeemably woke. Uh, this is just something that he has been uh, very open about. I could there, were, there was a particular speech I was trying to find of him. He gave, I think, in 2017, uh, where he's just literally explaining, oh, no, I'm a woke freak and I hate free speech and I hate white people. And I, I, th- I think, you know, straight people are terrible, all this. Like he was a pastor. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, it was like, yeah, exactly. Like he was literally a preacher in the church of woke. I couldn't find that, but I found a recent interview, well, recent 2019 uh, interview, where uh, Tim Cook, the power of diversity, right? This is just a quote from him. <laughs> like, it's just, Still okay. a preacher. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Tim, the power of diversity. We we get you. We understand that you're reading from the good book of leftism, right? You're you're, a, you're literally a left wing extremist, right? He's like in a rare interview. Apple Tim uh, CEO Tim Cook sat down with uh, a Spanish newspaper uh, chief to discuss his historic coming out and how that sends a message to the LGBTQ plus teenagers and their parents. See, he's just an icon for gay kids. Uh, and they also uh, filed a petition in favor of Dreamers, which are you know those people who are illegal immigrants uh diversity is important for creativity and he says well it's true we know we can create better products by being more diverse there we go that's it it's just diversity bro which is why africa has the best iphones the more diversity you are the better your products is i don't know it's it's competence no regardless of race no 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 no, no, no. it's just diversity Uh, it's better the more diverse teams uh we know the best products are created by the most diverse teams because products are created for everyone and that's why you have to pay me 500 bucks my phone. That's why the Austro-Hungarian Empire took over the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I love that these products are created for everyone. It's like, yeah, but look at the price barrier to entry to yeah. buy like an Apple phone. Dude, that's not for everyone. Well, <laughs> they're all fakes. Thanks, no, that's so, <laughs> thanks, thanks to China, you can get yourself yeah. a knockoff one, I suppose. There, there are a lot of um, Apple phones in the third world. Mm. But the, the question is, though, why are people parodying Apple over their censorship policies? You know, that's the question. I mean, this was uh, a parody video uh, made by uh, Epic Games in Fortnite about, well, Epic Games and Apple censoring them. Let's watch it. It's going to be good. Today, we celebrate the anniversary of the platform unification directives. For years, they have given us their songs, their labor, their dreams. In exchange, we have taken our tribute, our profits, our control. Just listen. Epic Games has defied the App Store monopoly in retaliation that Apple is blocking Fortnite from a billion devices. Join the fight to make 2020 not 1984. Uh, okay, and so this this happened in 2020. If you go to the BBC article, uh, Apple w- terminated Epic Games' account from the store over a legal battle over the in-app payments. Uh, they're complaining that you know Apple's getting a 30% cut. Epic says the fee is unfair. Uh, I think they failed to sue them in this as well because of course it's Apple's store. They can charge what you like. Um, and so Apple got their knickers in a twist about it and were like, right, yeet. I don't, I don't know how... I th- I, look, definitely Apple are against free speech. Definitely yep. they're trying to fight Elon Musk because he's against the Church of Woke. Yep. But this particular fight... Not great. Like, no, but the deets of it, it's like, you know, yeah. massive gaming company versus massive uh, yeah. distribution company arguing over percentages of... That, that was actually part of Apple's defense. We're like, look, we, you know, by using the Apple store, you turned into a multi-billion dollar company. Yeah, we it, can't really be screwing you that hard, can yeah, we? Two major companies arguing over who deserves yeah. more money out of it. No, yeah, exactly. I don't. Yeah, um, I don't know. Maybe Fortnite even some other stuff that's for free speech, but I'm unaware of it. Yeah, but uh, but the interesting thing about that, I mean, it's not like a great argument necessarily from Epic. I mean, thirty percent is a lot, but you did kind of sign up for it, and people are like, "Well, it's a monopoly." It's like, well, actually, most phones owned worldwide are actually Samsung. They're not, you know, they're Galaxy, um, uh, the Galaxy, the Google, um, I can't remember the name of it. They're just Samsungs. Just yeah, but it's, it's a different Android, that's it. Oh, right. Uh, the Android platform. So they're, 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 that's open source, isn't it, John? Uh, Android's open source, but the Google Play Store is. 
Right, yeah. So Android's open source, but the Google Play Store isn't. But the point is you can install apps that aren't from the Google Play Store on an Android phone. You can't do it on an iPhone. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't own an iPhone. If I'm wrong, correct me. I'm never going to give money to Tim Cook. And if you have, you should be ashamed of yourself. But the point of the Fortnite ad, they, they, there is there is a kind of point. It's like, look, you own a major segment of the market share. You are... <laughs> Like controlling, we should own that. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not that they should own it. It's that it should be. Know. It should be more open and accessible. Fair enough. There is an underlying point there that I do agree with, even though the Epic Games example is a terrible example. Yeah, I just don't trust Epic Games care about us at all. It, no, no, of course not. You know, it's it's more about things like Parler that are more important because Apple, of course, yeah. removed Parler from the App Store, even though Parler had done literally nothing wrong. You know, there's no evidence at all that Parler was the place that the January the sixth insurrection was organized. But the, the point of the uh, Epic Games uh, video about Apple was it was a parody of one of Apple's own commercials from 1984. Let's watch it. Today we celebrate the first glorious anniversary of the information purification of victims. We have created for the first time in all history a garden of pure ideology where each worker may bloom Secure from the pests of a contradictory force. Our communication of the walls is more powerful a weapon than any fleet or army on earth. We are one people, with one will, one resolve, one cause. Our enemies shall talk themselves to death, and we will bury them with their own confusion. We shall prevail. January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh. And you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Just interesting how the speaker representing uh, the, the leader is saying things like pure ideology and, you know, and, and how the tables have turned. You know, once Apple becomes a dominant force in the market, suddenly... It is a platform to enforce an ideological regime. It is deeply oh. ironic. It's part of tech companies as well. I mean, yes. like you think the people who started up the tech companies, how many of them are still around and yeah. running their companies? Well, Zuckerberg Jobs is dead. Zuckerberg's the only one. Yeah, they're all gone. Even mm -hmm. the guys who started um, Google, they, they got other people to run the place. They're busy. Oh yeah, another crap. Yeah, Sundai Pachai now. It's just completely um, corporate people who yeah. run all of that as soon as it gets big enough. Yeah, Zuckerberg's the only one left, and even he is not great. Yeah, Although, so, I hate these adverts. I never liked it. Like really? Because it's a bit bollocks. Like, she turns up, smashes a screen. You know what happens next? What would happen next? Gets arrested for property damage. Yeah, those three police would beat the <laughs> crap out of her, mother off, and the and the drones would go back to work. It is. That is true. Western fantasies about freedom. Just, <laughs> just sick of it. <laughs> that is fair. Um, but anyway, so going back to Elon, uh, he begins his uh, kind of pushing back on Apple. <coughs> Should Apple publish all censorship actions that is taken to affect its customers? Well, two million people well, 1.7 million people roughly, say yes. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure they a lot of people would, but of course they're not going to. Uh, and Apple then apparently has threatened to withhold Twitter from its app store. Okay. But as Elon says, they won't tell us why. It's like, well, of course they're not going to tell me why. We know why. Because of distinct ideological differences between... <laughs> The rabbit hole might know why. <laughs> well, they, yeah, yeah, okay. Right. They, <laughs> I was going to elaborate a bit more, but obviously, yeah, it's because ninety-seven percent of them donate to uh, the Democrats. That's why it's it's profound ideological differences. And referring back to the picture of Washington crossing the Delaware, well, the Democrats are the French liberals, the Republicans are the English liberals, and this is a bifurcation that is causing the. <laughs> civil war that's brewing in america uh, but interestingly they didn't threaten to remove balenciga for noncery nonce fashion that's fine yeah. you know kanye west is like hey guys i'm a bit concerned about you know certain demographics and they're like you're gone kim kardashian's like yeah we're not married but nonce fashion kim kardashian's like well hang on a second i'm a brand ambassador here did you see her response <laughs> Uh, I did, but I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. She was like, I'm, I'm thinking about whether I should okay. cut ties. Yeah, like, yeah. Really? Right. Children what, in what bondage What more do you need gear? to think about? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just tell us what, specifically. Yeah. She's like, oh, well, you know, they may have been tricked. I'm like, I know. <laughs> they may have 
open trench. Don't really. Over no. and over and over again <laughs> through every stage of this process to get these adverts through production. And then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. those, those crafty but, yeah. nonsense. They're not, again, Epstein never lost his bank account, did he? No. You know, literally convicted for paedophilia. But anyway, so Elon uh, tweeted this out, which... Um, <laughs> for people listening, pay 30% or go to war, and Elon's going to war. Yes. Uh, Elon, uh, li- literally taking the Alexander the Great approach, uh, go as fast as you can, as directly as you can, towards the largest enemy army, and then charge personally yourself into it. Literally the Alexander tactic. Uh, and uh, with tweeting at Tim, P- Tim Cook, that's, that's literally like Alexander at Issus charging at Darius and making him flee. Not even joking. This is genuinely like Alexandrian tactics. Now, whether Elon ends up becoming the great after this, well, depends whether he wins, doesn't it? Um, but, uh, but then he, could, he took that down, actually. I had to get an archive of that. But uh, funny that he posted that. But then he you know, starts talking about Apple's 30% tax. Uh, they're making, uh, you know, over on developers who make over a million dollars a year through the App Store, uh, they take a 30% tax on that. And uh, he starts retweeting people in agreement, people like Lex Fridman, who are like, well, Apple should support free speech. Say, so, yes, they should, but they're also communists, you know, or like, you know, neo communists, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and they're not going to. They don't believe in free speech, do they? Um, and the, you get P- Elon replying to people who are like, well, you know, monopolies should be subject to the same limits that we place on government because. Uh, you can't go anywhere else, which is exactly why we place limits on government. And uh, Elon's, of course, absolutely, especially if done in collusion with government. Uh, and he uh, he also has got some interesting things coming our way, which is the Twitter files on free speech suppression soon to be published on Twitter itself. The public yeah. deserves to know what really happened. This is what I'm hyped about. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What did the US government do, or you know, whoever it was, to suppress the Hunter Biden laptop? Mm-hmm. That's the thing. And that's the story. Every other thing as well. But well, every other thing as well, but that's like, really the story. There's a real like mountain of dirty diapers here, but like the yeah, the main one is the Nappies, hand Callum, not diapers. Oh, whatever. Stop being an American. Um, but yes, so this is going to be very exciting. Uh, hasn't been published yet, obviously. But then this is the final thing that really cemented it for me. This is a battle for the future of civilization. If free speech is lost, even in America, tyranny is all that lies ahead. Now, he's right, and that's something I've said many a time back in 2017. That's good stuff. I'm very happy with this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> just to say, I think, I mean, like, Elon, I don't, I, he, he kind of acts like Trump in a lot of ways. He just kind of tweets how he's feeling at the time, right? This is clearly, you know, he's just like, oh, I'm not happy with this. And he does this a lot, you know, where he just tweets, like, memes or opinions or things like this. Uh, and everything he's done so far, frankly, I think he's on our side. You know, I'm not, well, I don't I don't disagree with any of it. I mean, re- really, I mean, our joke at the start was really right. I mean, there are, there are two positions to take. You either play the game and don't have fun, hmm. or you have fun and just tell the truth. Yeah. And if you're in that position, you're going to end up, Trump and Elon are the same guy in that regard, because yeah. they both just want to have fun and tell the truth. Yeah. I was like, when it comes to... The fact of, well, is there a big cabal of companies and ideological <laughs> agents trying to destroy every piece of freedom we have in the West and make us like China? It's like, do we need to debate this? Yeah, not really. Uh, <laughs> it's so, so self-evident, you know. Mm. Um, but the point, the point uh, is, I, I was talking to uh, some friends the other day. I was like, look, well, what we're witnessing is the conflict of two sort of theories of history: the great man versus the organized minority. And the the great man came in, bought Twitter, smashed out, cleared out all of the. Uh, the lefties, the organized minorities, and uh, has turned it into his own domain. But that's got consequences. And this is where the organized minority, after taking a severe defeat at the, fir- at the sort of, you know, the, the Battle of the Persian Gates or whatever it is, I can't remember the order that Alexander's battles went in now. Uh, we get it, you're a history nerd. <laughs> I know, but I should. No, no, this is this, it's embarrassing. I should remember them. Um, yeah, is this this, then Galgamela? So, you know, he's, he's won Issus, by, which is taking Twitter, but now the the great king of Apple and the organized minority are gathering their forces for Galgamela. Uh, Elon clearly is just going to charge straight into the belly of the beast. Hopefully he's good enough to win it. Um, but so far, frankly, I think he's on our side and I like him. So uh, good luck, man. Hope you win.
If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Epoch series we do, this one on the first emperor of China. If you'd like to find out what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.